We're here at Unkaringo Bwindi Gorilla Lodge in the southern sector of Bwindi. On one side we've got the Virunga Volcanoes and on the other side we look down into Bwindi Impenetrable Forest. Now, Bwindi Impenetrable Forest is home to more than 50% of the world's mountain gorillas. And in the southern sector of Bwindi, there's a very special gorilla habituation experience. Now this is the only place where you can do this. You trek a unhabituated family of gorillas and you get to spend up to four hours with the gorillas. So we're gonna show you what it's all about. Morning, it is 5.30 in the morning. Super early, but it is gorilla habituation trek day. And the reason we're up so early is because the gorilla habituation trek takes place in the Rishaga sector of Windy. Now that is 45 minutes drive along the ridge from Unkaringo Windy Gorilla Lodge. Um, so we need to leave here by six o'clock to be at the briefing point by seven. So it's quite an early start. Um, I'm suited, I'm booted. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I'm wearing, what I'm taking with me. Uh, so a lightweight technical t-shirt on top, uh, just to keep me sort of nice and cool. I've opted for sleeves for some added sun protection as well. I've got some lightweight but rugged walking trousers and I've got those tucked into my socks. Um, that just means if I step on any biting insects, red ants or anything like that, they'll stay on the outside and hopefully I won't get bitten. On my feet, uh, I'm gonna wear a good pair of trail shoes. Uh, we do recommend walking boots because they have a little bit of extra support, but the most important thing is that you've got a good, rugged, grippy outsole. It is muddy, it can be slippery, so you need a shoe with good grip. Personally, I just find these a little bit more comfy. We're gonna be trekking for about four hours with the gorillas, so the whole day could be a lot longer. I just want to make sure I'm comfy. Uh, I'll be taking with me a day sack, and in that day sack, I'm gonna have a lightweight but breathable rain jacket. Uh, it is rainforest, uh, so it can rain at any point. And then I've got a pair of waterproof trousers as well, uh, just so if the water runs off that rain jacket, it doesn't just soak my legs as well. Uh, again, we could be out for quite a long day. Uh, I don't want to be wet and miserable. Uh, nor do I want to be cold, so just in case, I probably won't need it, but I've got a long sleeve, lightweight, warm top, uh, just to put in my bag. Doesn't take up much space, doesn't weigh much, so that will be coming with me just in case. Then I'm taking also a pair of gaiters. Uh, again, just cover the bottom of my trousers, stop any debris, bugs, things coming up, uh, either into my shoes or up into my trousers. I'm not a big fan of gaiters. Uh, we do recommend them though. Um, it's something I will take with me just in case I need them, but I might not use them. Uh, then I've already put on some, some sunscreen, uh, but that will be coming with me. So the forest can be quite open in places, especially when you're going in and coming out of, out of it. So uh, sunscreen is worth taking. And at, at 2000 meters up, the sun can be pretty brutal. So I'll take a cap just to keep the sun off my face if we're lucky enough to have a nice sunny day. You might laugh at this one, garden gloves. These are going in my bag. Um, you will be grabbing hold of trees, it is slippery. Um, you will be moving branches out of the way. There are nettles, there are spiky trees, things everywhere. These are gonna protect your hands. Always worth taking a pair of gardening gloves. Then, a face mask. Now, is it mandatory to wear a face mask when you see the gorillas? Uh, human diseases can be fatal to gorillas, so we're protecting the gorillas. Uh, so we don't have to wear it for the whole trek, but when we get close to the gorillas, face mask goes on, just to keep everyone safe. I've got two bottles of water, uh, just so I can drink throughout the day. I've got a good camera. So I'll be taking this phone that I'm recording this on as well, so I can get some videos and I can get some photos on that. But you never get as good photos on a phone as you will on a decent camera. And although it's habituation and I'm hoping to observe the behavior of the gorillas more than just spend my time looking at a screen, we're there for quite a long time. So I'm gonna take a battery pack and all the cables I need to charge phones, to charge cameras, things like that. Then, 
an extra memory card just in case you get a bit excited. Uh, I've got some dollars for tips at the end of the day. And then we have to take with us a copy of or our passport just so when we go to the trekking briefing point they know we're the person that's been booked onto the trek. So all of that is going to go into this rucksack. So this is really cool, it's a waterproof rucksack. Uh, so I put all the stuff in, roll it down. Uh, again, it is rainforest, so it is likely to rain. That will keep all my stuff dry. I can put my drinks bottles on the outside, uh, which is pretty cool. And I've got a zip pocket that I can just access things that I need. Uh, so that's really cool. So all there is to do now is head up to the restaurant, uh, get a bit of food in me, uh, pick up a packed lunch, which I'm also gonna put into the day sack, get in the vehicle, drive down through Shaga, have that pre-trek briefing, and then game on. Let's do this, let's show you what's out there. So we've had our morning briefing. This is Antonio, head guide for the day. Antonio, tell us a bit about the differences between the habituation trek and the standard trek. Uh, the difference between habituation and uh, this normal tracking yeah. is that uh, with habituation, habituation is a process of training gorillas from the, their life of wildness to become used human beings. So under that process, normally takes between two to three years. And today we are visiting a group called Bichinji, which has been under habituation for a period of one and a half years. And now I can say it is halfway habituated and halfway wild. Uh, habituation, of course, takes four hours. Uh, that's, we gave it a long time because uh, gorillas are not settled. They keep walking, or they are yeah. not free to use it. Sometimes they walk, sometimes they rest. So that's why we gave it a long time. We expect charging. Since it's habituation, charging is expected. But sometimes it can happen and you you don't see them charging, depending on where you found them. Okay, well, let's go. Let, let's go see what we find. Oh. So we've been trekking an hour or so. Yeah. And we're not far. I think we're pretty close to the gorillas. So far, the paths have been good. We're going up and down a little bit. So the mask is on. Means we're pretty close to the gorillas. Here we go. Oh. That was a highly exciting welcome to the gorilla habituation trek. The silverback popping up out of nowhere, arms flailing, showing his teeth, screaming, shouting, charging really close to us. And that happened on numerous occasions before he calmed down and let us follow him through the forest as he searched for the rest of the family, gathered them together, stopping to feed, moving on to the next spot, feeding some more. Now they didn't really stop for more than two minutes before they carried on moving, so they were constantly moving. It's quite difficult to get photos as sometimes they're in quite thick forest, but because they move a lot, you do sometimes end up in quite open forest where you can get really good photos and videos. Now, you do get up to four hours with the gorillas, with the gorilla habituation trek. It doesn't mean you have to stay with them for the full four hours. If you do get tired, uh, if you want to stop a little bit earlier, you can. And then you trek back out of the forest to the main headquarters and then get in your vehicle back to the lodge. So just to summarize the differences between the standard trek and the habituation trek. Uh, with the standard trek, you are trekking with a maximum of eight people and you get to spend an hour with the gorillas. Now, as the gorillas are used to human beings being around them, they tend not to move in that hour. They'll stay pretty much in the same place. That allows us to get close to them and get very good photos and very good videos. With the habituation trek, uh, we're trekking with a maximum group size of four, so it does feel more exclusive. And when we find the gorillas, we can spend up to four hours with them. Now, from my experience, the gorillas do charge a lot more, but they are constantly moving. That's the main difference. Uh, you're following them through. It is a more natural experience. It is more exhilarating um, and highly, highly exciting. It is more expensive than a standard trek. Um, is it worth it? 100% yes. Is it worth doing the habituation trek in place of a standard trek? Probably not. Is it worth doing the habituation trek as an addition to a standard trek? I think you get the best of both worlds if you do.